Can you imagine that we live in a world where no waste is created in the first place? The motto of Cradle to Cradle is, and I quote from the website, following nature's example, all waste is a nutrient for something new. We now only use materials that are recyclable and suitable for the intended use, healthy for us and the environment. We are very happy that we were able to win him for our Congress for the second time. Professor Dr. Michael Braungart is professor at the Erasmus University Rotterdam and at the Leuphana University Lüneburg, professor for eco-design, managing director of the Environmental Protection Encouragement Agency Internationale Umweltforschung GmbH in Hamburg, and Scientific Director of the Hamburg Environmental Institute. Peter, can you imagine that in 10 years we will only use bio-based and biodegradable materials? No, that would be too optimistic. We have, we have now the opportunity to build up the structures and the industrial facilities to produce biological thermoplastic polymers in an eco-friendly way. We can introduce it in the market. This is a big chance to create business models. And in the meanwhile, we use and recycle all existing plastics in a responsible way. We have really no other chance. Thank you very much, Peter. And now please join us in welcoming Professor Dr. Michael Braungart. Roll the film. I'm Michael Braungart. I'm a chemist and a chemical engineer. And I have been working with biopolymers now for more than 40 years. And definitely we are a little slow compared to the challenges which we actually have and to the need of biopolymers. Uh, I want to talk to you about one specific aspect focusing on microplastic, because there are new publications out which show that we already have 1.9 microgram per milliliter in our bloodstream of microplastic, which is uh, 1.9 milligrams per liter, which is a huge amount. And when you look how many particles this are actually are, then it's really scary. We need to do something specifically to handle microplastics and biopolymers can play the key role for that. So I want to run you through some slides and just give you a little idea where I come from and in which context I think we can really do something. Last July, I was in Austria. So this is a Groß Glockner glacier where I'm taking this picture. Actually, here there was a glacier uh, in 95. Till today, you can't see it anymore. Uh, let's face it, the, the greenhouse effect is happening. Yeah, the existing concentration of 420 milligrams uh, ppm of, um, green, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere means that we are destroying this planet. Uh, and we are now losing our glaciers. The Greenland ice is now melting, the polar ice is disappearing now, the permafrost is ending, ending now. So with the existing concentration, it will mean a rise of our sea level for at least 20 meters. So we need to do something differently. We need to look how we can become native to this planet. Traditionally, we think we are protecting the environment when we destroy a little less. Please protect uh, the environment, reduce your water consumption, reduce your energy bill, reduce your waste production. But you're not protecting, you're only just destroying a little less. Yeah? When you use your towel in a hotel only uh, once instead of twice, yeah, you're, you're causing more water uh, consumption. But actually, um, when you use your towels a whole week, you're not protecting the environment, you're just minimizing the damage. It would be the same if I would say, please protect your child uh, slap your child only five times instead of ten times. Uh, you're not protecting, you're only minimizing damage. And this is logic. East Germany has been protecting the environment so much better than West Germany just by inefficiency. They couldn't destroy all these wetlands because the system was not efficient for that. 
So let's talk about how we can be good for this planet but instead of less bad. We talk about reducing waste, but we are the only species which is making waste. When we are making waste, we are immediately too many people on this planet. We want to be climate neutral. You know, see, in a city like Hamburg, Berlin, France, Paris, London want to be climate neutral in 2040, 2050, whatever. But think about you come home and you tell your child that you are child neutral today. Don't you want to be good for your child? Uh, think about that you that you uh, are more stupid than a tree. A tree is not climate neutral. A tree is good for the climate. So let's think about how we can we be good for this planet. This means to eliminate the idea of waste from the very beginning. And it's not about zero waste, because when you think about zero waste, you still think about waste. It's like when I tell you don't think about Donald Trump naked, you think about Donald Trump naked. Yeah, so don't think about a pink crocodile, which might be the same. Uh, then you think about a pink crocodile. Now think about everything being nutrition. All things which gets consumed, like food, like detergents, like shoe soles, like brake pads, they need to be desired, designed to go into biological systems. Car tires have 470 chemicals being used to make a tire. But these tires are never made for the biosphere. Now they last twice as long and people think, oh, this is good for the environment. No, before the rubber hits the road, it stayed there. Now you inhale it. Now it ends up in the waterways. More than 50% of all the microplastic in uh, the river Rhine, it comes from tire abrasion. So we are making wrong things perfect, and then we are perfectly wrong. We first need to say what is the right thing. So we are not we are not consuming a TV set. We are not consuming a washing machine. These are service products. So in cradle to cradle, there are only two types of products: the ones which get consumed, which are changed chemically, biologically, physically by being used, and the others which are just services, which which say the same in the technosphere. With that, yeah, we can reinvent the whole system. Traditionally, people think from cradle to grave, which means that the whole planet will become a graveyard. And traditional sustainability makes your customer your enemy. and say, oh, I'm 100% evil, 90% evil, my goal is zero. It's all guilt management, reducing, avoiding, minimizing. This is traditional eco-efficiency. I said, hey, uh, please, customer, don't buy my stuff, then I reach zero immediately. But you only can be climate neutral when you don't exist. So don't you want to be good for the climate? Think about you tell your child that you're child neutral today. That doesn't really help you so much. So let's agree that we will make a difference in the future. We will say, hey, in 10 years, this is where we want to be. Dear customer, the more you buy, the quicker we are. And all the stuff which gets consumed in the polymer area needs to be designed for the biosphere. So this is a different mindset. Now your customer becomes your end, your friend because you, you, the, your customer helps you to change the, uh, the, the company as a change agent. So it's not about efficiency. It's about effectiveness. You say, hey, what is the right thing? Yeah, And then you ask how to make it right. If you make the wrong things perfect, then they, as I said, they're perfectly wrong. Let's talk about a, a tree in spring. This tree is not reducing, not avoiding, not minimizing. This tree is not efficient, but very effective. This is a habitat for more than 200 other species using the right energy sources and everything stays nutrition for the biosphere. And we should we don't want to be just live like a cherry tree or like an ant or termite. We want to have TV sets and washing machines. So we have the biosphere and the technosphere, but everything is nutrition. Celebrating diversity, not standardizing homogenizing things. Yeah. So it definitely makes sense to reduce oil and gas. We see this in Ukraine, how important it is that we really can stop such a dictator uh, destroying other countries. And uh, uh, this is why we need to minimize, reduce, avoid the use of fossil materials. But this is just a small part of the whole thing. Where do we become beneficial for this planet? For being less bad, we have far too many people. But if you look at the biomass of ants or termites, they're equal in their calorie consumption, 30 billion people. The biomass is about four times bigger than of human beings. So we are not too many, we are just too stupid. So let's talk about a triple top line, not a triple bottom line. We want to make stuff which is good for economy. We want to be beneficial for society, but we want to support the other species as well. Traditionally, we tr try to minimize our impact for the environment 
but for being left bad, we had too many, by far too many. So this is a triple top line, not a triple bottom line. It's not about sustainability anymore. Sustainability, sure, we want to see for the biosphere. We want to see the, the tigers and lions and bears and you know, giraffes in, in 50 years, in 100 years as well. But do we really want to see the same office chair or the same computer in the next 50 years? No, true innovation is never sustainable, otherwise it's not innovation. So let's talk about how we can have holistic quality a product which becomes waste just as a quality problem. It's about quality and beauty. It's no longer about moral obligation, not corporate social responsibility. Oh no, we don't need trade unions, we care for our people. No, no, it's not. It's not an ethical thing, it's a quality thing. Because not only Germans will get ethical behavior under stress immediately. So don't make an ethical thing. Understand, it's about quality. Product which ends up in the environment is not, and it's not biodegradable, just as a massive quality problem. So let's talk about not re reduce, reuse, recycle. Now it's about rethink, reinvent, redesign. So this is where biopolymers are so important because sure, biopolymers make sense. But why do we just in, do the same thing over and over again? I just did a, in Egypt a type of a, a master degree with a student. There is a piles, meters of plastic basically there. And it's not worth to collect it because there is still PVC in it. And even it doesn't, it, you cannot use it to make oil out of it. You cannot burn it because it, it, so it's there. And then we are little racist, narcissist, narcissists. Oh, people in, in Egypt or India don't have environmental consciousness. They are not aware. aware. No, they have the wrong plastic. <laughs> and now they make it lighter. Yeah. The, my biggest enemies now are people in, um, yeah, yeah, in, in companies which are in charge of sustainability. These sustainability experts, they don't really want to change things anymore. They add another two cars to the electric fleet. They make the plastic bottle 5% lighter. They increase the recycling rate by whatever, 10%. Yeah. But they only make wrong things perfect. You first need to say, what's the right polymer from the beginning? And sure, the future polymer needs to be built on renewable materials. The, the future polymer needs to be designed to go into the biosphere. And we can have all different types uh, of uh, transition, like... One of the smartest biodegradable material is Ecoflex, for example, from a company BSF in Germany. Yeah, and it's oil-based first, but it first says what is the right material, yeah, what is designed for the biosphere, and then I can optimize it and use the proper bio-based uh, resources for that. Yeah. So let's not try to be perfect immediately because otherwise we will not change things anymore. Look, this is a key fact sheet. If you see that, you can just say, hey, are we so stupid? Yeah. We find such a huge accumulation of microplastic in our bloodstream. The concentration which we see in, in our brain obviously leads to behavior changes with animals. So textiles, can you really make textiles where microplastic ends up in the ocean? <laughs> this is silly. Can we make car tires, which mean that we have 28% of the plastic in the oceans <laughs> from car tire abrasion? Can we make road markings, marine coatings, personal care products? Uh, can we lose plastic pellets, which don't degrade in the environment? This is stupid. When we change microplastic, which... Uh, F always will occur when we use plastic, but when we, we use plastic and consume it by using it, it needs to be designed for that. So, for example, when we use PET bottles, yeah, you can use PET for about eight times for the same purpose to make bottles out of it, but then the chain length is so short that we cannot use it for bottles, but we can still use it for textiles. When we add linear polyesters to the stream of PET, then we can make PET biodegradable. And sure, we can make the whole PED, PET bio-based. Then it makes sense. Then when you use it now for textiles, the abrasion from textiles, and sure, it makes sense as a traditional thing, like people do it now in, in France. In France, you have to use it a microplastic filter in your washing machine at 25 from now on. Uh, but but this is only end of pipe. No, we need to 
to do design differently from the beginning. That means synthetic textiles need to be designed. So the synthetic fiber is designed to make healthy microplastic. Then I'm really happy about microplastic because it becomes a matrix where we can have um, bacteria, um, microbes, all different mushrooms, um, algae on top of it. So we generate healthy microplastic because it degrades in the biosphere. The same with ty car tire city dust. Can you imagine people make brake pads and have plastic matrix in it and they don't consider, think about what is actually in, <laughs> in the, these brake pads. And then it says, for example, for one big European car manufacturer, it says, these brake pads are free of asbestos. And then I analyze it. Instead of asbestos, it's now antimony. Antimony is a much stronger carcinogen. Yeah. So let's talk about having healthy plastic, which is good for the environment. We need to look for plastic even more. Like people now use Teflon for printing. And it's not only oil-based inks, they use Teflon. So when we have such a pizza, you eat about one credit card, five grams of, uh, with one pizza of just chemicals, which are used as fillers in cardboard. Yeah. They come from paper recycling and they're used as a filler. This is ridiculous. So we have the wrong plastic. So we need to stop the use of PVC, whether it's bio-based or not. It's a wrong material. It has a carcinogen as a monomer. And when it ends up, it has the same density as PET. It basically st uh, doesn't allow proper recycling of materials because it, it, it's just a stupid material. At least we need to stop it first for packaging because with the packaging, as I mentioned, for Egypt, this is the wrong thing from the beginning. You're inhaling uh, plasticizers which destroy our, our immune system and our endocrine system. So we only have half the man which we had 30 years ago. Sure, we can do something to minimize. So look, we think Friday for the future. No, it's Friday for history. Because what we do here, bags which actually are made out of PVC sheets from trucks, how ridiculous. This is massive abuse of human health because these plasticizers are off-gazing. You are now sealing the building to save energy, so you inhale all the plasticizers. They're never intended for that. So we really need to take PVC out of all these applications because wallpaper coatings, hey, how, how can we be so stupid to, to make wallpapers coated <laughs> with PVC? That's ridiculous. So this is, these are all business opportunities here. Yeah. You can do something when you really want to minimize our plastic problem in the oceans. Just, <laughs> just eat oysters. In each oyster, we have at least 1,500 particles of microplastic. When we, if we find up to 40,000 particles of microplastic in, uh, in uh, oysters. So if we eat enough oysters, we can just take the plastic out of the ocean. What do you think about it? Yeah. And, uh, and so this is a plastic problem as well. So how can we allow to make a paper coated with plastic. And so we said, oh, paper bags only. <laughs> but, but as well, a paper bag is a plastic bag because it has a wetness stabilizer, which is epichlorohydrine in it. Yeah, so it's not a paper bag. It's a cellulose coated with plastic yeah, as, as a wetness stabilizer. And these, these um, yeah, paper towels stay in the environment <laughs> for up to six years. Yeah, this is just next to it. Yeah. A German highway next to Berlin. So, so this is, yeah. Oh, you think, oh, it's just beautiful white flowers. Yeah. But actually, it's not. Yeah. And here, it's a plastic problem. You inhale at least 2,000 particles of microplastic. Can we work together to make a bio based, biodegradable mask? Yeah. You exceed occupational health limits with these masks. Yeah. People uh, got to uh, produce them in China for. <laughs> For four cents, and the pharmacists got compensated by five euros in German pharmacies uh, at the beginning of the corona epidemics. <laughs> uh, sure, it's profit like in drug dealing because the pharmacists are dealing with drugs, it's okay. But you see hundreds of chemicals. This polypropylene is never made for us. And if you make it bio based, what we see now, it's still the wrong plastic for making masks out of it. So I have my students. Yeah, we make we formed a company which is called Holy Shit. Yeah, and we make a biodegradable, perfectly biodegradable mask with modalis cellulose uh, um, uh, fiber made from lensing. And we see it's perfectly degradable. You can wash it 
it has even FFP3 certification. It's better than the mandatory uh, um, masks which we have. Uh, but we still need one single use micro, uh, 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 biodegradable mask. And I would really ask you to, uh, to help me to develop one. And please get in touch with me because there are already 3,000. Ma uh, three billion masks swimming in the oceans, and uh, and we and and they will stay there for three hundred years. We have the same problem everywhere. Donald Trump is a much more honest liar than we are because there is no recycling. Yeah, we just have downcycling. We make out of valuable mm, uh, steel alloys. We make cheap uh, concrete enforcement steel. But now there's a difference because of that, because of trade unions, because of the majority owners of BMW. BMW announced the first cradle-to-cradle -cradle car in 25. So whatever you have with bio-based materials, just send me a note because we definitely can use it here for all the stuff which gets consumed, like uh, underbody coatings, like paints, etc. Which you can make a difference. In 21, you, in, in 21 they announced it. So now we have four years to go and we will see a cradle-to-cradle -cradle car with cradle to cradle interiors. Sure, the business model will not be that you are no longer selling this car, you're selling basically transportation insurance. When you are no longer selling the car, but you sell the service of using it, you can use the best material. Instead of uh, 180 types of plastics in a BMW, you can make a BMW with less than 20 types of plastics. And they can all be bio-based and biodegradable, or bio-based or biodegradable, depending whether they go into the, into the biosphere. So we tell people it's better we are not here. Yeah? So when you make people uh, unhappy about to be on this planet, then people become angry or greedy. Yeah? So let's talk about how we can we be good for this planet. Okay, if my child would have these ears, I think I would limit the number of children as well to two in that as well. Yeah? But it's a little cynical. Can you imagine? Yeah, uh, Prince Harry has an ec ecological footprint of about 15,000 people in Nigeria. And said, oh, we limit the family to two children. This is quite cynical. Sure, maybe you should give an award to Lady Diana because she passed away so early, so she helped this planet as well. Yeah. But in that logic, you can take the elevator in a building. When you do so, <laughs> uh, you can reduce your, your um, footprint by five times because we have such a perverse agriculture which needs 10 calories of energy for one calorie of food. So when we just take... Well, it takes the elevator. We only need two calories for that. So don't you think about that it might be good uh, because to take the elevator because then you pass away a little earlier as well. No, let's celebrate human life on this planet. Let's see us as a human opportunity. But here we have Friday for the future, you know, protesting the main shopping mall of Hamburg. Yeah, And it's all made with plastic paint. So can't we make a paint bio-based and biodegradable because it needs to have microplastic which can go into the oceans. So can we look for having the same concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than we had in, in 1900? Because we need to take the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So couldn't we agree uh, just this, this community that in 10 years from now, we will only use materials which are either bio-based, which are biodegradable, or which are made out of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So we can make polycarbonates easily out of carbon dioxide. So these are just the polyesters of carbon dioxide. We need to come down from 420 ppm down to 280 ppm. Otherwise, this planet will destroy itself. And with 1.5 degrees Celsius, we just will slow down the destruction in system, which collapses slower. It means that the niches die as well. When a system collapses fast, it can recover from the niches. So even when we slow down the collapse of this planet, we will just do, reach the opposite for the biological system. So we can make stuff which is good for the biosphere. It's not a circle, it's a sphere. And it's a technosphere because we don't want to make the same things over and over again. This would be like London Eye. This is bloody boring. It's linear thinking in cycles. So it's not circular. So we can make fabrics free, which are perfectly compostable, edible fabrics. Normally the trimmings you make it makes these fabrics for chairs and airplanes or, or sofas. They're so toxic that they need to go into into <laughs> into hazardous waste incineration. No, we can make fabrics which allow that the material can even the trimmings can be used as mulch and 
replace peat. We can make shoe soles. This is adipanat. We can make biodegradable shoe soles. These are the Puma InCycle collection of 116 different products, and we can make these things. We can print on textiles. You can see this here. We can print it in Bangladesh. Yeah. And, and so as a shoe, we have 110 grams of shoe sole operation every year. So shoe soles need to be bio-based and they need to be biodegradable at the same time. So we need to have packaging which is designed for the biosphere. And let's look for Nova Matabi. This is exceptional what they are doing. Let's look for nature works, definitely. They do a really great job. And don't argue about using agricultural products first. The first thing is to what is the right thing. And then we can look what could be the raw material base for the future. Sure, we see that we can make biofilm, which is so more elegant for fish, for example, packaging. And because when styrofoam ends in the ocean, it stays there for hundreds of years. Yeah. We can make pa packaging out of algae. So where we don't have a microplastic problem because it decom decomposes in salt water. We need to look for artificial uh, turfs because there is a massive uh, microplastic problem. We can make carpets which are not just not toxic but which are actively cleaning the air. So we need a bio-based nylon, and I would like to work with you on that nylon six because it's a perfect material for the technosphere. We can make carpets which are actively cleaning the air, not just being less bad. For digitalization, we need defined use periods. Yeah. For the technosphere, for the biosphere, we can use things forever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So we now see that even Ursula von der Leyen, yeah, the president of the European Commission, talks about, so this is in German, but I think you can put it on a translation program. It shows you don't need to buy a washing machine. You can buy the service of using a washing machine which allows to just to use three types of plastic in a washing machine. So we can the price doesn't pay, play a role anymore because you can use the best stuff, not the cheapest one. But so what is do we best? Zero? <laughs> yeah, no. But zero blast is interesting because it's not a plastic. It's, it's cellulose mixed with B-Vax and with calcium carbonate, which is nice. But do you want to be zero? No. You want to be good for this planet. So we need positive lists of additives in for pigments. Uh, yeah, otherwise, you, you have the wrong stuff. We need to look how we can use PVC only for the technosphere. It needs to be stopped in the biosphere completely. I mean, because of the use of caustic soda, we need to have pipes, for example, as a, as a source where we can put plastic, where we can PVC in because we need caustic soda sodium hydroxide. Let's make buildings like trees, buildings which support the other species, which buildings which are good for this planet, buildings which uh, um, yeah, which support life, which clean the air, which clean water. Let's be good for this planet. So let's have a, a beneficial footprint, not minimizing a footprint. Let's have a big footprint, but let's make, make it a wetland. The most urgent case when it comes to biopolymers is microplastics. So all the microplastic needs to be made, made bio-based and biodegradable because it ends in the environment and stays there and we don't know what will happen out of it. So I really beg you to look for microplastic being biodegradable, going back to the biosphere in a defined uh, way. Hello, Professor Braungart. Good to see you again. We are very happy to have you back yeah. with us. How are you? Oh, when I see you, I'm fine. Oh, great. Thank you very much. The audience was quite busy and uh, came up with questions. So uh, let's see what the first question is. Mm. How long uh, do you think will the uh, transformation of the plastic industry take, in your opinion? I think we need to define clear goals. And, for example, we need to say when we use plastic, which is not bio-based, then we will only use plastic, which is made out of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In 10 years, you know, let's say, take a city like Hamburg yeah, deciding in 10 years we will only buy plastic which is made out of carbon dioxide right? or which is perfectly biodegradable. Yeah. Then we will change it like we, we, dis we saw it in the United States when 
if I said we want to be <clears throat> in 10 years on the moon, then it works. So we need to have clear goals. When I just tell my students to increase the, the recycled content uh, or to reduce the weight of them from plastic, then I don't get the best students. But when, do you want to be a part of a positive story? Then I get 150 students immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, yes, also hello from my side. Um, hello. Uh, we have the second question. Can all conventional plastics be replaced by biopolymers? Yes. That, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> There's not one single uh, plastic which cannot be replaced. But I ask you not to replace conventional PVC by bio-based PVC. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is our goal. That is our mission. Yeah? Yes. Uh, we are very much into the bio-based uh, polyesters, and I believe that is the right way to start. Okay, this is my opinion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the, the polyesters are the most natural polymer. And, for example, we could make a bio-based PET, and we can make PET biodegradable as well. When we add linear polyesters, we can make it biodegradable. Okay, thank you for this. Uh, so I see there is another question coming in from the audience. Um, which are commercially available biodegradable polymers and who are manufacturers? So first of all, I really want to ask you all, the whole audience, to look for making single-use masks which are compostable or at least biodegradable, because uh, why should we be so stupid to, to let make polypropylene, even when polypropylene is bio-based, it will stay in the environment for 300 years minimum. Mm, mm. So can we say for the next biopolymer conference, we will have at least two dozens of producers of uh, biodegradable masks, because it's a nightmare and we yeah. inhale microplastic, yeah, which stays in our body forever. Mm -hmm. That's a definitely a good idea to have this goal for the next Congress, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is our task. It's not just a good idea. Mm. It, it, why don't we it, it really take the problem seriously? Yeah. Otherwise, we just try to pave the way to hell with good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we are working on that and getting uh, a lot of companies producing biopolymers, bio-based and biodegradable polymers. This is our goal here. Um, the next question is, um, how can my company or product get a cradle-to-cradle -cradle certificate? First of all, the certification is not really necessary when you make what you're doing transparent. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then everybody can see it. Yeah. And uh, on the other side, uh, there are a lot of biodegradable, bio-based materials already certified. You can look under cradle cradle certified, and then you will see these, like, uh, like for example, the, the PLA if foam replacing styrofoam, for example. Cradle to cradle is so is so attractive because it's a yes/no decision. Can I put it in? my compost, can I have my fireplace, or do you take it back? Yeah, why should I be in charge of things which I don't know? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, right now we are privatizing the profit and we are, and we are socializing the risk. That cannot be the case. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is maybe a, a good last word from your side. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you very much and we will keep in close contact for the next show then. Good. So yes. I, I really enjoy uh, being at your conference, at least virtually. And yes. I really wish you all the best and good luck. And, and I always will do lobby work, volunteering for you to make sure that the industry grows much faster. So I always build back you up. 
Thank you very much. Thank We you. really appreciate that. And okay, yeah. Um, yeah, you are our godfather, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, so uh, you, Professor Braunhardt, for your participation you. and for the uh, great insights. Thank you. Take care. Bye.